Hello everyone, welcome to another Git training video and today we will be going over submodules and what they are. So first to just show you what a submodule is, it's easiest to show you what it will look like in GitLab. So here I'm in the Mr. CDH repo and we use a Git module or a dependency. Um, they both mean the same thing, so let's get right into it. The Git module allows you to edit the settings and change things once you have created the Git module. We won't be covering how to change that yet, but this is what uh, the Git module look, settings look like. And I will actually come back here real quick. You can see here the submodule is in depths, which is short for dependency. And this repo is dependent on the MSAT library repo. So essentially what a mod, Git module is, um, or a submodule, or a dependency, like I said, they're all, I they mean the same thing, is it allows you to use a repo inside of another repo. Right, so right here, this is Mr. CDH repo. If I go to depths, there is a link that will take you to another repo. Uh, there's multiple reasons why you would do this, uh, but for this case, are a lot of the libraries we want uh, are located in here. And this is a general MSAT library that multiple repos call from and it alleviates the need for copying and pasting files or code all over the place. Um, for example, if you go over to third party, this one is actually also dependent or has a Git module of the wiring pi. And this is the main one of the reasons we link uh, the MSAT library to the Mr. CDH repo is because we actually end up wanting this wiring pi library, along with other things in here that I won't get into. So heading back to Mr. CDH, again, here in the Git module, you can see depths and then the MSAT library, and that's where we just came from. So now how to actually implement this. Pull up your favorite terminal or Git bash editor, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and just clone a repo that needs the dependency set up. So here I'm going to click on the Monte Carlo repo for our GNC team and go to that repo. Um, I have a working branch right now, so I'm going to go ahead and check out that branch um, so that I can add this Git module, make sure everything is good, and then push it back to the main branch. Adding the git module is actually pretty easy. So you'll just come here and do git submodule add. And then now we want to type in the path of the repo we want. There's two ways we can do this. The first way, we can come over to the, to the repo that we want to clone. Or not clone, sorry. We can go to the repo that we want to link. So right here is the flight code repo that we are constructing right now for GNC. And we want to link that to the Monte Carlo repo. So I grabbed that link and then did that. Um, and then the last thing, which this is a more of an option than the requirement, is I want to have a folder where this repo is linked rather than having it in the main directory like we saw in the Mr. CDH. So I'm just going to come here and add a folder called depths and then I'm going to name the link or the submodule flight code. So this is one way to do it. The second way, which is not as intuitive, is something like this. Uh, so, how does this work? Um, it's actually not that hard to understand, right? So, <clears throat> we're working in the Monte Carlo repo, and we want to link the flight code repo. So, and the, it's one directory back, and then we go into the flight code repo. So, that's all we're doing here is telling GitLab, hey, in our website where this repo is stored, I want to go back to the directory it's stored in and then go into the flight code repo. Pretty simple as that. Now if I click enter, 
it will add the module and now you can see it's here in depths and I click LS there's the flight code if I go to the flight code it will now link me in the, the flight code repo or I can be in the flight code repo um, you can see uh, by default it checks out the main branch right now there's only a readme in that repo which is why we don't see much um, so now I'm going to go back I'm back one too far one important note be the config settings that are important to know if you want to edit the submodule for whatever reason so when I type in ls all I see is readme in depths however if I do ls dash ls space dash a I get to see some of the hidden files that git hides for me. You can see there's a git modules and a git ignore. Uh, this git modules was, was actually generated when I, where did it go? When I added this sub module. Um, so if I open up that git module in a text editor or, um, or in Visual Studios, you can see the module settings like we saw before. One thing I'm going to add, which, like I said, by default, it does the main or master branch, um, but I just like to put it, this here um, just in case, you know. So I'm just choosing the branch I want to uh, have checked out when I link the repo. And then, uh, so that's how you change the git. That's one thing you can add to the git module. So backtracking to what I actually wanted to say what's important is this uh, git directory. So this can uh, be a dangerous tool if you don't know how to use it uh, because this decides the git settings for your personal device and uh, things like that. So if you come in here and mess with things, you better know what you're doing. Otherwise, you're going to have to um, pretty much del delete the branch or delete your local repo and reclone it, and then potentially lose data or lose progress that you didn't save. Going into this uh, config file, the nano dot or nano config, and then you can see which branch I've branches I've checked out right now, um, and then you can see this sub module. If for whatever reason you need to change the sub module, you can either remove the sub module or change the the URL. When you change the URL, you have to make sure you change it in here along with in the skip module. Otherwise, when you update it and recheck it out, um, Git will get confused. If you're going to remove it, then you simply just delete these lines. Um, and then over here, you need to completely delete the Git module. And then that removes all traceability of that module. And now you have the ability to keep it a clean slate if you want or add in a new submodule. So I'm going to go ahead and exit this because I don't want to touch anything here. And then I am going to uh, commit and save. Um, one important thing to note in the README when you do this is to add uh, this line. So whenever you clone the repo, uh, this just makes sure that the submodule is up to date and any submodules within that submodule or repo are updated. Right, so if we go back to the... Mr. CDH code. We have that same direction here. If I go in the right folder, right branch, um, we have we have the same thing here. Um, this isn't critical, but it's just uh, one of those things that's good to have and good to run every time, right? So this will update this linking, but also it will update any dependencies within it. Um, by default, that will not happen, right? So remember this third-party uh, folder. 
This will make sure that Wiring Pi is also up to date. And it just makes sure everything's linked properly and up to date. So, yep, essentially, every time you add a uh, sub module to repo, make sure this is in here and make sure um, your members are updating the module to eliminate any potential issues. So, let me push this. That's all good. And now, if I come over here, to the repo, and then in the depth branch, you can now see in depths it links to flight code, and everything is linked properly. That pretty much sums up the video, so thanks for watching.